Hi, Jeff Ballard here. I wanted today to try and explain a few of the tricks and tips that we've learned over the years of running race teams on changing clutches and what's what we feel is important and uh, what is not. But obviously, uh, changing a clutch, uh, you know, people will get to the point they'll get stuck on hills and burn them out or whatever, or give them a hard time and it gets to the point where it's, it's worth uh, changing the clutch. It's also a good idea to say that in, in a general sense it's not a bad idea if you can <clears throat> work ahead of time a bit and even carry a spare clutch with you in your kit when you go somewhere because it, if you're going for a long ride or a long weekend away and then you realise hey the clutch was right on its last legs. So uh, anyway, so over the years we did a lot of clutch changes and we had some pretty hard riders who burn them out pretty fast, myself included. I, I was pretty bad on a clutch. so. Uh, so anyway, you, you, you learn a few tricks. One of them is uh, instead of taking the brake pedal off, you've obviously got to take the uh, access cover off. On the old bikes, you, you didn't have the luxury of this little cover. You used to have to take the whole side cover off. So in most of the modern bikes now do this uh, setup, and it's really good. So one of the one of the uh, tricks is to to get the rear brake and just spread the pads by pushing on the uh, caliper and what that does is that gives a lot of free play into the brake pedal and then instead of it blocking the the cover you can push it a long way down and with a spanner or something you can jam it in in the bottom like like that so now we it says it's taking that off um, you know basically there's a series of uh, in this case mo in most cases a jap and most they are using eight millimeter um, uh, bolts so yeah anyway it's pretty quick with a spinning t-bar or that sort of thing you can use a little battery drill um, is to get the cover off that's the first thing okay so try and uh, try and know where the longer bolts are and the shorter and when you're putting them back always start with the long ones because uh, the longest ones if you get it in the wrong hole it's easier to pull it out than it is put too short a one in there so find a spot where where you can uh, rest the stuff. So in this case, it goes from eight and then down to uh, down to ten. So here you've got the uh, the top pressure plate. Um, what happens when a clutch wears out? Basically, you you uh, lose free play on the lever when you when you heat them up too much. You get too much free play. So that's m what most people feel when they're using the clutch, burning it a bit. Then they they get free play. So you're always, you know, on a, on a hydraulic clutch, it self adjusts uh, and you sort of say so you don't really know where you're at exactly, but with a, a cable, then you get to feel it. So you can feel it's uh, expanding and uh, heating. So you need to, to take some of the free play out. Uh, w one of the things that's if you've got a cable clutch is to when you're putting a new clutch plates in, they're thicker. So you actually have to give yourself a bit more free play. You can always work it out at the end, but if you know, you can you can do it right at the start. Okay, so in this uh, situation, uh, all of these bolts have got spring pressure on them and they're designed just to, to, uh, to tighten, obviously not over tighten. Um, the spring pressure helps stop the, the bolts unwinding, you don't need to use uh, Loctite or anything. They should be pretty straightforward, pretty easy to, to do. Okay, now you're in this deep, you can just uh, start pulling the clutch apart. Um, we're just going through the sequence of basically showing you the, the order of the, the plates is uh, pretty much all the same. And you, you start with a, a fibre plate and you'll end with a fibre plate. But while we're talking about fibre plates, I also want to note that in probably 98% of the time, the wear in a clutch will be in the fibre plate, so it's you know it's very very rare that you will uh, need to change a steel plate. So most of the time, the importance is in the fibre, uh, unless the steel gets warped or something like that, um, which will be indicated where it'll be hard to find neutral and there's what they call drag. So in a general sense, if you've just overdone your clutch or it's just been in there too long, then you you only really need to change the fibre plates. And it's a good idea as well to change the springs because if you really overheat a clutch, say for instance you burn it out and you get stuck on hill until you've got nothing left or whatever, it puts a, a crazy amount of heat into the whole clutch and 
even though the steel plates 99% of the time will, will survive, the springs usually take a bit more of a set and they lose the pressure. Um, and the design of these clutches means that, you know, you've only got to lose uh, 0.2 of a millimetre. Your manual, again, always look in your manual. It gives you really good information, but it's the tolerances is very small in these things. So there's, there's usually about eight plates in a bike like a 450. So if you lose 0.2 of a millimetre times eight, you end up with just, you know, less uh, pressure on the springs because as the clutch wears, it, you reduce the spring pressure as well. So it doesn't take all that much when you lose a little bit off each one. So it's a bit disappointing. You look at it and you go, they look fine. But in the big picture of adding them all up and, and what's involved with the spring pressure is been such an important part as well uh, it's enough to make the clutch slip so there is uh, there's a few little tricks to to get you out of the bush and you can basically jam the clutch up and you can drive out of the bush but um, one of the things also that I, I wanted to note is, is I see a lot of people talking about putting a new clutch in and how you have to soak the plates in oil before you put them in. Well, I, I was lucky enough for a while there to be able to work with Yamaha technicians while we had our race team for 14 years. And and uh, the Yamaha clutch people told me that it's it's not that important at all to oil them. It's just, you know, they said, obviously, if you just put a brand new clutch in, you're not gonna go straight to a start line and take off. But pulling the clutch in, lets all the oil get between them, letting it out again helps squeeze it in. And really, as long as you're not a complete animal for the first few seconds it's it seems to be fine and they you know they're quite conservative and they care about all that stuff so they said it's not important so from there on we used to do it in our race team and we stopped doing it we stopped uh, oiling the plates it's just one of those things but plenty of people say it is good so you know it's it's not hard to do it but it's a bit messier but we don't do it anymore and we certainly don't have any more problems so so anyway, basically this is still a good clutch, but I just wanted to show you, you go through the system, it goes, it goes fibre steel, fibre steel, start with a fibre, just, just pay attention with the way you, you pull it out. Um, but uh, again, you know, it's, as I said, you know, save yourself money if you, if, you, if you understand that nearly every time you don't need to buy the steels, you just need to have fibres and, and good springs or check the spring length in your manual, but it's, it's quite often a good case to uh, change the springs as well. So just a quick intro, you know, and some of the tricks just to get in there a bit quicker, but um, you know, if the clutch is really old, sometimes you'll get the hammering from the, uh, from the fiber plates hitting the side as you drive off and these get serrated and you can usually cheat the system a little bit and use a file and just smooth them up again. Uh, it'll only last so long, but Clutches, depending on the rider, they, they hang in there, they last quite a long time. So, you know, it depends on the rider, but it's a pretty quick and easy process. Um, just understanding how that works. Once you've put all that back in together, just obviously check your clearance. If you've got a cable clutch, hydraulic, uh, you don't need to. It's one of the main advantages, I believe, with hydraulic. I like uh, a lot of things about cable and I like the disengagement of this bike, but you know, if you do overheat them, then you don't have to adjust. So there's, there's plenty of fours and against, but in this case, uh, this bike's new and everything's good, but I just wanted to show you a few little tips and, uh, and understanding how, the, how, the, how to change them quick and how to get, it, uh, get yourself back on the road if you have a problem.